sex hormones largely determine where a person stores their fat. And when you look at a little boy and a little girl who are growing up, they look identical in their body shape. There's no difference until they reach puberty. And then the moment the sex hormones come into play, the sex hormones among the many effects they're having, metabolically speaking, determine where the body will store fat. They're literally like estradiol is literally enhancing the expression of enzymes that will dictate fat storage at breasts, hips, and buttocks. You know, the kind of prototypical female sites. Whereas the androgens are largely inert they don't really promote fat storage anywhere, but but the the only hint of it is is centrally, you know, abdominal. Um, now all of that is white adipose tissue. Anything you can pin, and that that is particularly true in females, um, because females relatively store so much more of their fat as subcutaneous fat than males do. Part of the androgen effect of fat storage is a little more visceral fat, so that's the fat that is enmeshed around the organs behind the muscle of the stomach. Um, but, but the, the, the estrogens effect on fat storage is overwhelmingly subcutaneous. And that's good because one subcutaneous fat produces more leptin than visceral fat does. And two, if you have a woman who's storing a lot of fat viscerally during, especially during her reproductive years, it is, it may complicate the fact that you're about to grow a baby there. And now that the, the fetus is in the growing uterus is competing for very limited space with all of that visceral fat tissue. The visceral fat would, would be like actually pressing in on that very area. And so it's no surprise to me that the female phenotype is designed more to store fat subcutaneously because it gets the fat out of the way of that critical area on her body for fertility. Now, <clears throat> you'd mentioned very early on, and I was struck by the comment, and I just wanted to come back to it, that women do naturally have a higher set point for, for adipose tissue. It is supposed to be that way. <clears throat> Part of it is the necessity for leptin women's uh a female fertility female fertility is is much more dependent on a higher amount of leptin than than male fertility is and i th i believe here's a little more speculation but it's informed that uh that reflects the fact that the female body bears the metabolic burden of fertility the male has a brief wonderful moment and then his role in, in essential role in fertility is, is over. Now, I would submit that the dad has a profound role through the life of the child, of course. Um, but, but even still, the, the, the burden, if you will, and I don't want to use that term, that term may be too loaded because having had a wife who, who was pregnant multiple times and we have beautiful children, it's also incredible, but it is a burden on her body, a, a metabolic It's physically burden. and chemically demanding. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Per yeah, you said it. That's right. Um, so she, her body carries that metabolic burden. And basically, my my thought is that her brain needs to know that there's enough fat on her body to, to carry that baby, to develop that baby, to gestate that baby, because her metabolic rate will be higher during pregnancy than it has been at any other point in her entire life. Because she is working so hard to grow her own tissue and to give the energy to the baby to grow the baby. And then even when baby's born during lactation, her metabolic rate stays very, very high because she's still producing enough energy for two. So the, it's basically the brain's way of saying, hey, fat cells, is there enough of you that if we suddenly um, had reduced access to food, you have a lot of fat on you and we can carry this baby? Now that I, I don't, you know, mean to assume like starvation, that would of course be a big problem. But it's basically the brain's way of ensuring there's enough stored fat that it is okay allowing fertility to move forward. <clears throat> and and that is through leptin. If there's enough fat cells, there's enough leptin going to the brain, and the brain will turn on this gonadotropin pathway, going to the pituitary, then going down to the ovaries and telling everything that it can go forward. If there's not enough fat cells, there's not enough leptin, then the brain will shut that pathway off. It will turn off that, that axis of that gonadotropin releasing hormone from the hypothalamus, and then everything downstream of it, the pituitary will turn off its follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone, and the ovaries will just reduce all of those sex hormones. And then pregnancy, well, fertility would stop, ovulation would stop. So there's a 
there's so much nuance here, isn't it? And the female fertility cycle is just so remarkably complicated. I like to joke that male fertility is like a barbershop quartet. And then female fertility is like an orchestra. That reflects the fact that her body bears the metabolic burden, not only of the gestation, but also of the lactation and feeding the baby. And so it's no surprise that it's a very, very complicated affair. But all of it even still comes back down to the humble and often misaligned fat cells. And so, and this, this explains in part, you know, you're talking about kind of coming back to location, like the morphology, let's say, of a woman in her reproductive years, you know, will use fruit, like kind of like a pear, right? So mm -hmm. sort of bottom heavy, right? For this advent, like this advantage, let's say, should she become pregnant, that we don't have this visceral fat in the way of, you know, the baby. And even if you've ever looked at, you know, uh, almost a full term, you know, a woman who's in her third trimester, like the liver, like everything literally moves out of the way for this baby. It's actually quite remarkable. But it also explains as a woman moves out of her reproductive years and into, let's say, menopause, where now we have this uh, very acute drop in her estrogens, estradiol in particular, as we've been talking about, and maybe she loses that, um, let's say, uh, aromatase activity and she becomes mm -hmm. potentially a bit more androgen dominant. Why we tend to see a lot of women in their menopausal years, they have that ectopic fat distribution where they tend to put weight kind of more centrally, you know, you sort of said, you know, the androgynous type is to put it to sort of put fat or, or uh, deposit fat more centrally kind of in the like that visceral fat. Oh.